Hi, Jonathan here. How are you doing, guys? I used to work in a field with maintenance engineer. One of the most frequent questions is how to identify rubber material. It all looks the same. In the field, the toolbox mixed with a bunch of different O-rings, and they all look alike. In this scenario, an engineer would take a new item instead of taking risk on mixed O-rings. However, sometimes taking small O-ring from procurement team may take hours. Indeed, there are experienced engineers who can tell the difference in types of rubber. Today, I'm going to share some of my tricks to identify rubber material and share with you guys. Actually, to identify rubber material is a very difficult task. The best way to identify it is using a Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy (FDIR). This instrument will shine an IR beams to the sample and measure the absorption in certain wavelengths. Different material will have different absorption in various wavelengths. FDIR spectroscopy is like a DNA signature of the rubber material. A base FDIR instrument is cost around. 10 grams, not too bad, right? However, with options, they are talking about 30 grams. Yeah, it's just like the car manufacturer charge you round wheels for extra money. A third-party lab typically charge around $500 to $700 for a single test. For most of the users, it's not a practical solution to identify rubber material due to the cost. The alternative way to identify rubber material is like a, this guy, Kevin. Is using a drop wedge in a steel tube by monitoring the bouncing of the drop pass from the O-ring. There are several limitations to this device. The cross-section has some limitation. It has to be thick enough to have a proper bounce. The harness is limited to 70 durm short A. It is also affect the bouncing height as well. The challenging part for me is I really don't have a pair of eagle eye to see the fast bouncing. Maybe I should use a high frame rate camera to catch it. Then the method become more primitive. Some people using the strength of O-ring. Indeed, different O-ring have a different elongation and retraction characteristics. Some people squeeze the O-ring to get the feeling. Some people think ah, chewing or licking or smelling the O-ring can tell you the difference. Honestly, I don't have enough of these sense to figure out the difference. Today, I'm going to demonstrate a relatively scientific but cost-effective way to identify rubber material. Specific gravity. According to Wikipedia, specific gravity is the ratio of density of a substance to a density of reference substance. Equivalently, it is the ratio of the mass of a substance to a mass of a reference substance for given volume. Mm, it sounds complicated to me, let me explain it. We'll use a lab scale and submerge the test specimen o -ring, into the water bath. And it cannot touch the bottom of the beaker. This is very important. The O-ring will repel certain amount of water because of it occupy a certain volume of water. So we call it water weight, W-O. Then we measure the O-ring weight in air. We call it air weight, W-A. The specific gravity is the ratio of weight in air to weight in water, W-A over W-O. Not rocky science, right? So the most popular reference substance is a water at 4 degrees Celsius or 39.2 Fahrenheit, which are going to use today. Specific gravity of different rubber material can be slightly different because of this, most of the manufacturer will disclose this information as public references. It is the best method to identify rubber material. It is also considered to be the most cost-effective way and the most available to use on equipment. I have this most common specific gravity of rubber material in our catalog as a reference. So nitrile rubber is around 1.1, fluoroelastomer is around 1.8, EPDM is around 1.2, silicone is around 1.3. So we leave the water bottle in the fridge overnight. We make sure it's close to 4 degrees Celsius or 39 degrees Fahrenheit, as close as you can get. 
The water does not need to be a fancy UPDI water, ultra pure deionized water. Tap water or any place you can find water will do the job. We'll test two different scales, a professional scale setup and a household setup. One setup is a lab scale. This lab scale can accurately measure two digit decimal in gram. So it can measure 10 milligrams accurately. So it can measure small size of O-ring specific gravity. We actually tried a gemstone specific gravity testing rig. However, I found it's not particularly useful for O-ring application. It can get a good job done, but the beaker was too small and the calculation is a little bit different from our equation and a little bit complicated. So just keep it simple. On the household setup, we have a kitchen scale that can reach up to one grand. We'll use a DIY version to create a fixture. We use a cloth hanger I got from the dry cleaning store. You can get any type of a steel wire to create your own jig. The most important trick is to make sure the small hook that can hang the entire o-ring in the beaker without touching the button or the sidewall. With a small hook or small platform can hang the o-ring in place is good enough. Put the o-ring on the hook or on the platform, measure the water weight, that's it! We'll demo two set of o-ring to show you the result. To be honest, both scale will do the job. It just really depends on the size of an O-ring or testing specimen. Of course, all the testing methods have their own pros and cons. Sometimes it's just a matter of timing and cost. With any new technique, it's always a good idea to validate it. Just like the famous quotation in the photography world, the best camera is the one that's with you. The best test is the test with you all the time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please click the like button, smash the subscribe and the bell icon so you won't miss any update. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.